Hello everyone. This is the second video of five part series of inventory management system. And if you haven't checked the first video, I would highly recommend to check that video because I have provided the introduction of this project into that video. And for others in this video, I'll be creating the Azure blob storage account, Azure Python function, their integration, and then we'll do the testing. So let's check the step-by-step -step implementation in the lab. I'm logged into Azure portal now. And let's start by creation of Azure storage account. Let's go to Azure storage account, create a new storage account. I'll create a new resource group, RG project. Let's name it as ST inventory shalender 0001. The region will be Australia East because I'm based out of Australia. Performance standard. Let's change the redundancy to LRS. And everything else will be same. Even create and create. So the deployment has started and soon the storage account will be created. I'll pause the video and we'll be back once it's done. Storage account is created now. Let's go to resource and the storage V2 is created. Let's go to containers in data storage and create a new container. Data container and create. So now we have created a storage account and a container in it where we'll save the blob files. Next step is to create Azure Python function. And for that, I'll be using the Visual Studio code. So let's open an empty folder in the Visual Studio code. Open folder. I'll quickly go to the location. So this is the folder which I want to use inventory project. Because this will be a Python project. So let's start with virtual Python environment. Go to terminal new terminal, it will be PowerShell. So if you have Python installed, so let's run the Python virtual environment. V E N V E N V. And it's highly recommended to use the virtual environment so that all the dependencies can be taken care in that virtual environment only. So this will create a folder with the name VEV virtual environment and all the files and libraries will be stored in it. So now this function will be a blob trigger, which means whenever there is an update in the blob or new file is uploaded in the blob, this function should trigger. And for that, you need to first install the Azure functions extension. So this is the extension you have to install. And once this extension will be installed, you will go here in the Azure and in the workspace, you will see the Azure function and go to create Azure function project. And it'll ask you which location do you want to use? We want to use the same location inventory project. It will be a Python function. So select Python. It will be a programming model will be version two. This is the latest version, which is supported in Azure functions. And then there are multiple triggers. I have already created a video for that too, but in this project, we'll be using the blob trigger. So click on blob trigger, name it as CSV files. So now we have to provide the path. And we have created a container. Let's quickly check the name of the container data container. Let's provide that location data container. And let's create a new local app settings, though I'll be deploying in the Azure functions app for testing and use the Azure storage account for remote storage. And this is the storage account, which we have created. 
and rest of the things will be automatically done by the Azure Functions extension. So it will create a connection string to add the connection string into the local settings too. So the function is ready. Let's go back to our files and you can see there is a function app. There is a host.json which shows the different extension bundles which we are using. Which version are we going to use? Version 4. Local settings which shows the connection string which we have to provide into the environment variables. Though this is local setting, if you want to run this function locally then this local settings.json will be required. But if you want to run the Azure functions then, then we have to provide this value into environment variables which I'll show you quickly. And there is a requirements.txt. If there are any specific requirements for running this Python file, in that case, we have to specify those requirements. Because when we deploy it to Azure functions, first all the requirements are taken care and then the code will be pushed into the function app so that all the dependencies are bundled together. So now there are slight changes which I want to do. With the data container slash, I want to add name dot csv which means in this container if there is a file with the extension csv then this function should trigger let's save it now the very basic python function app is ready and let's deploy it into azure deploy to azure create a new function app. There are two options. Either we can create the function app from here or we can create it to Azure and then deploy it from here. So let me do one thing. I'll create the function app in Azure and then deploy it using the VS code so that we can see both the options. So let's go back to Azure portal. Go look for function app. Create. I'll use the consumption plan, which will be event driven, which means it will be pay as you go based on the number of the times it has run. Select. I'll use the same resource groups. So it will be easy to decommission once this project is done. Function app name, inventory, update 001. Runtime stack will be Python. Version will be 3.11. Region is Australia East. Next. For saving the files in the function app, there should be a storage account in the backend. So I'll just create a new storage account for that. And we don't need Azure Files connection. Networking. It will have a public access. Let's leave it like that. And we want the application inside so that we can see the logs when the function app is running. Review and create and create. First a server's form is created, application inside and then the storage account. And finally the function app will be created. So I'll pause the video and we'll be back once it's done. Function app is created now. Let's go to function app. And here you can see a function app is created. Though we have to create a function in here, but let's deploy the function using VS code. Let's click on browse. And it's just telling that the function app is run because we are going to create a blob trigger function. So in the case of HTTP trigger, you can trigger your function using the HTTP request. So let's go back to Visual Studio Code. And now to the local project, deploy to Azure. And this time it will show the function app. Now we have a function app mentioned. We can even create a new one from here. And it's just asking, do you want to overwrite everything so yes and just deploy it so it's cleaning up the temporary folders and everything 
and here it will install all the dependencies first and then the deployment will be done perfect deployment is successful let's go to azure portal refresh this and you can see your csv file function is there if you'll click on this function you can see your code here your function app file and all the different files which are there but now if i'll try to upload any file into storage account it will not work the reason is because we haven't provided this connection reference anywhere so let's try it let's go to the logs so that we can see whether if there is anything updated or not and open another tab it's connected logs are connected now these are live logs i'll go to storage account this storage account containers data container and let's upload one file so let's upload test csv and upload and let's go to the function let's see if anything is updated here let's check if there is any invocation there isn't any invocation and the reason is because the storage account connection is not there so let's go back to our function in the settings go to environment variables click on add let's copy the values from our vs code local settings name let's copy this value and don't worry about this value i'll be deleting all these resources before i upload this video apply and apply and confirm so now the environment variable these are like the local settings if you are running in vs code these are the local settings which you have to define so now this is defined here and let's go back to our function csv files go to logs and once it will show connected i'll upload the file again let's upload the same file again test csv or let's upload the new one new csv upload and this time it should show the logs and here you go so the python blob trigger function process and executed the functions.csv file because this is what we have provided in the logs if we'll go back to our functions.py file there is the logging that python blob trigger function process blob and it provides the name and the bytes of the function so it provides the name so it provided so it provided the name however it's showing the bytes as none because it's a very small file so it provided the name so in this video we have just created two resources blob storage account python function app and this python function app is not complete we have just created the function app which can just trigger using the blob trigger and in the next video we will be creating the sql database key vault manage identity and then update the function app so that it will read the csv file and update the content into the sql database So that's all for this video and check the next video in this series. Thank you.